This morning, we're going to do a teaching on the Rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. Pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, O God, for this day. This is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. And Lord God, may your word, Lord, may your word touch our hearts, Lord. Your love. Your love is, is as the rose of Sharon. May your love envelop us, Lord, in this time. May we receive you and your bountiful, abundant love. May you have your way in this teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. The Rose of Sharon um, captivated me. This week, a few times, he kept bringing me back to the Rose of Sharon. So we're going to go into the, the Song of Solomon. Don't you love the Song of Solomon? I just, I just love the book. Um, and and it was and it was taught last week through Minister Caroline that this was the month of, of reading um, the Song of Solomon. Um, so I've been reading it this week, um, and I wanted to read. Um, it was actually this this version in the complete Jewish Study Bible that I wanted to read. Um, I like the way that this read. Song of Solomon, chapter two, verses one to four, says, I am but a rose from the Sharon, just a lily in the valley. Like a lily among thorns is my darling among the other women. Like an apple tree among the other trees in the forest is my darling among the other men. I love to sit in his shadow. His fruit is sweet to my taste. He brings me to the banquet hall. His banner over me is love. We are his and he is ours. You are his. This whole Song of Solomon emphasizes that we are his and he is ours. It's that beautiful communion. Hallelujah. And when he put here, I am but a rose from the Sharon. I wanted to touch on Sharon. <laughs> I kept reading it. I'm like, okay, the rose of Sharon. The place of Sharon. It's interesting in the word, it describes Sharon in different ways. In, in, one, in one scripture, um, it says here that it was considered a wilderness. Um, and it's a wilderness. It says here, um, in Isaiah 33, verse 9, the earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and home bound. Sharon is like the wilderness. And Bashan and Caramel shake off their fruit. Sharon was considered as a wilderness. Um, back in the Old Testament, it was like wilderness. And, and in other areas, I read a few articles and it referred to Sharon as being like a swampy place, a fertile plain. Um, it was a place where the herds did go and, and graze. So it was a fertile land. Um, I guess underneath, underneath the land, they were, they were, um, they were like, there was water underneath the ground and above ground, there were areas of just swamp. Um, it didn't go, it didn't go out quite to the sea. It just kind of stayed there. Um, so the land of Sharon was considered swampy, fertile, wilderness. There were different descriptions for this for this this land of Sharon. Um, so he says, I am but a rose from the Sharon, just a lily in the valleys. And the lily, the beautiful lily, you know, if you look at a lily, it's that beautiful, um, it's almost like a little cup, like a little teacup, you know? Um, and it says in the word that He's like a lily and he drips out myrrh. 
you know, his, his sweet word to us drips out like myrrh from that little lily. Um, and in the valley, the valleys are the hard times, aren't they? The valleys are the tough times. Um, but he's just like a lily in those hard times with us. And like a lily among thorns is my darling among other women. And then it kind of changes. You know, we can interchange these. We can see Jesus as the rose and the lily, but then he sees us as the rose and the lily. So, you know, um, like you, my sisters, you are all considered his loves among the thorns, among the other women, the other women that, you know, aren't his, you are considered, you are his darling, you are his love among the thorns, among the other women. Um, you stand out to him. You are his love. You stand out among other women. Hallelujah. And uh, like an apple tree among the other trees is the forest is my darling among other men. You know, the men, his men, his sons stick out like apple trees among the forest. Hallelujah. And he loves to sit and, and taste the fruit taste the food of our lives and we see Jesus in this too absolutely that he is he is that apple tree among the forest and we love to um sit in his shade and taste his fruit the fruit I mean the fruit that he bore when he was on this earth for three and a half years I mean all the time and in his ministry in the three and a half years all that he did for the poor and the sick and the lame and the blind that he healed that he he brought everyone to him that, that people received him as Lord and they live, they live, you know, they live. Um, he is, he is that fruit. You know, last week we were talking about the fig tree, how he was angry that there were no trees, you know, there was no faith in the land. And then fruit is also considered, you know, the fruit of our works, right? The fruit of our works and how he longs to taste the fruit of the, of the great works that we're doing for him. Hallelujah. He brings me to the banquet hall and his banner over me is love. His banner over us is love. You know, we go, we go to, uh, to our meetings of fellowship and his banner over us is love. We come together and we just band together in love for one another. Don't we sisters? We do. He brings us to the banquet hall and his banner over us is love. Hallelujah. But we're so distinct to him. Each and every one of us is so distinct, and that's what I get from the Song of Solomon, that we're so distinctly his, distinctly his, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I just want to go back to the Rose of Sharon. It's interesting, you know, the Rose of Sharon is a hibiscus plant. It's not a rose at all. There's no thorns on it. It's a hibiscus plant and it's, it comes from like the Orient. It comes from China, I believe. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful shrub. It's, it, it, it blossoms plentifully like during um, midsummer to September, depending on where you're at, it, it buds abundantly. And, you know, each and every bud, it, it may only last maybe two, three days maybe, but there's another one right behind it coming to bloom and bud bud so it, it it blooms plentifully it's abundantly it's an abundant bush of um of blossoms and it's 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 really just a splendor really to admire in the summer months because it's grand it's really grand um but i'm curious about what the rose was in israel so we're gonna keep reading here um, the Plain of Sharon. Yeah, I'm going to just read the Plain of Sharon. It's a section of the Mediterranean coastal plain and the most densely settled in Israel natural regions. It is a and is roughly triangular shape and extends north to south from the beach at Mount Carmel to Yaron River in Tel Aviv, Yaffa. Um, I wanted to share this this is a little side note, but it was interesting um, when he was speaking to me about the Rose of Sharon. I had three different um, Rose of Sharon bushes on my property, and um, two of them were just little, um, little, little springs of of a, of a main of a main Rose of Sharon. It was just a little sapling, two little saplings. But I had them where they weren't really blooming very well. They didn't have much sun. So I decided to take them from each of the different places and I put them in the sunny place by my fence and I married them. I remember the day I was doing it 
and it was very prophetic when I was doing it. I married them. I put them side by side and I put them actually very close to each other, which normally you wouldn't. You would maybe put them maybe five feet apart so they would grow. But I felt, nope, I need to marry them. I need to put them close together. And they were like maybe a foot apart. So I married them and I got a kick out of that. I was like, wow, okay, Lord. And then a day later, there was another one, another, another rose of Sharon that wasn't blooming. So I took that and I put it behind them so that it was like the shape of a triangle. And it was like the Trinity, you know? Um, and that's what I just, I just kind of did what I was led to do. And I looked back and I was like, wow, it's like the Trinity. But then he brought me to the, the place of Sharon and, and I saw that whenever I saw that Sharon is actually in the shape of a triangle, that just tickled me, absolutely tickled me. <laughs> that, that it was a prophetic act that I did. And, and um, you know, he was ministering me. He was really ministering to me um, with this. I, I just got such joy, such joy out of this. Um, I'm going to keep continuing here. The Rose of Sharon, he, yep, it's the hibiscus. Da, 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 the Rose of Sharon. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make the point that, you know, our Rose of Sharon here, I believe, is different from, from what, what is mentioned in the Bible. Um, and we're going to go to Isaiah 35, 1 to 2. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Hallelujah. Whatever rose was blooming there, it was abundant. Um, and, and, and I just, you know, and I just love the rose of Sharon because I know how it blooms and it it, it, it just keeps blooming. It, it just, it's a rebloom. It just keeps blooming. It goes on and on and on. And, and it, and it does portray the excellency of God, the glory of God. You know, this portion of scripture, um, you know, it, it, it talks about the return, the return. And I'm going to keep going. As God passed judgment over Israel, he always followed with his heart for reconciliation and returning. The blooming in the desert shows the excellency and glory of God to the whole world that Israel is his. That we are his. We are grafted in. We are his. That distinction has been clearly made since Israel became its own governing Jewish state in 1948. And Jehovah is still wooing his people from all over the world to return to Israel, their homeland. He's always wooing, wooing people to come and return to him. Hallelujah. Because when we return to him, <laughs> there's that blooming, right? There's that blooming that happens when we are, when we are um, in the presence of the living Lord and the presence of, and in, in, in his living waters, there is that blooming, that constant blooming and reblooming life. We have our our life, our existence in Jesus. And he is he is the source. He is our source of everything. He causes us to bloom and grow, bloom and grow, bloom and grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. I look at him as the rose of Sharon. I look at him, the beauty of the rose, the beauty of, of, of that hibiscus plant, the beauty of, of, of the reblooming over and over again. He's our constant. He's our constant. Hallelujah. He's our constant, no matter where we're at, whatever circumstances we are at. It's like he, he wants us to just to keep to keep in him to keep blossoming in him. It's like that triumph, isn't it? It's that triumph that's overcoming that situation in your life. You know, um, that circumstance may last for a while. And so we are to we are to like wait on him in a way, but not to wait like stagnant. We have to be still blooming, blooming in him. Hallelujah. 
Um, and I just wanted to go back to that, <laughs> that, that, that Trinity, the, the Rose of Sharon, how he had me plant it in a triangle. And he led me to this afterwards. It was like he was, he was showing me that there are circumstances in my personal life that, um, you know, it, they may continue. And, you know, I, I, I can't stand still. I, I can't wait for that circumstance to, um, to resolve. I just need to, to keep in him in order to bloom and grow, in order to bloom and grow, in order to advance, right? To advance in, in every season. We need to keep blooming and growing in him, to stay in his love. His love, you know, there may be um, relationships, there may be um, jobs that went south, there may be um, areas in our life that, you know, seem like a wasteland, <laughs> they seem like a wilderness, uh, or even a swamp, um, and he wants us to, to keep hold on him, don't, don't, um, don't um, make that area in your life everything, you know, don't dwell on it, pray on it but we are to dwell in the present with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our life. He is our, he is, he is our, um, our substance. He is our source. Hallelujah. And uh, we don't want to get stuck in that swamp land, in that wilderness. Hallelujah. We don't want to get stuck on that. Nope. We want to move on. We want to move in bloom in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, and we move on to Isaiah, Isaiah 65. It says, and Sharon shall be a fold of flocks in the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down for my people that have sought me. Mm. And, you know, and I looked up that Sharon is currently now, it's Tel Aviv, it's part of Tel Aviv. Um, I love how both of these scriptures were prophetic. Um, you know, the Sharon, the place, the place, the wilderness, and now it, it's a flock. It, it, you know, there's, 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 there's actually, um, it's fairly de densely populated in Sharon now. Um, and how, you know, he, he, he's, he's bringing everyone to himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just wanted to continue here. Um, we can prophesy, and you know, he just put this in me that we can prophesy the blooming of the rose of Sharon into any barren wilderness or swampy area in our lives. You know, um, we can consider if there's any lack in any area of our lives. It could be finances, relationships, our prayer life. Um, it could be a lack of love in an area. Is there a wilderness, um, a neglected, a dry area? You know, it could even be like our household, you know, are we keeping our house <laughs> nice? You know, um, it could be our prayer life. It could be um, neglecting being in the word, relationships. It could be um, even neglecting in communications, you know, communications with others, maybe being, um, uh, you know, maybe too quiet, maybe not um, sharing more, you know, sharing what's going on in your life, sharing what's in your heart to bless others with. It's that um, could be that dry area of not communicating as much as we should be um, to be that light, to be that witness, but also to share what's in our heart, to receive comfort from others. Um, is there a stagnant, swampy area, relationships, love, life, sin, inaction? That's a big one, isn't it? Inaction. You know, I think of a swamp as stagnant, not moving anywhere, it just stays there, you know, and it's inaction. We can, we can pray the rose of Sharon bloom in those areas in our lives to, to be able to step out and bloom and grow in him. Hallelujah. And my last, um, my last scripture that I chose was Isaiah 51, brief. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving in the voice of melody. Hallelujah. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit into all those wasted places in our lives. We're just going to welcome Holy Spirit. 
and welcome his comfort. It says here, the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden. He's going to make that area in our lives bloom. An abundance of bloom like Eden. In any desert places like the garden. He's going to turn those desert places like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found there in thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, at the end, I am going to go back and I'll stop the recording and we can pray together on this. Okay, my sister. And for anyone and anyone watching this, um, you know, before you pray, you need to confess it. You need to confess and repent those areas in our lives that, you know, we allowed to become dry, swampy, overrun, wilderness. You know, there needs to be a confession of it, an acknowledgement of it, and a repentance of it. And then inviting the Lord, inviting the Holy Spirit into those areas and to declare the rose of Sharon bloom in those areas. Hallelujah. 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 And the last scripture, this was the last one, was Isaiah 35, 10. I love this. You know, in the word, he was speaking about the return, the return of Israel back to the homeland. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with song and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we get saved, when our souls get regenerated and we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, all that, all that, um, all that um, sorrow disappears because you are connected to your source. You're connected to the love of the lover of your soul. Hallelujah. It's the returning. We've all been ransomed. He, he was ransomed for all humanity. And when one soul, when one soul receives Jesus, there's a party going on in heaven. Hallelujah. And I just love the depiction. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with song and everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy. Joy is our portion. Joy is our portion. They shall obtain joy and gladness and the sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The oil of gladness is ours. That oil, that oil of gladness, that joy is ours. That is our portion. And we need to fight not to allow anything, any situation take away that joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just praise you, Lord God. I just thank you, Father, for this word, Lord. I pray, Father, for that joy, for the oil of gladness on everyone today, Lord God. May that rose of Sharon bloom in those um, neglected areas, dry areas, swampy areas in our lives, Lord God. And we just thank you that you are our rose of Sharon, that you are our hope, that you are the splendor in our lives, Lord God, that we bloom and we grow in you every day abundantly in your love and in your joy. We just thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.